Hi, my name is Pastor Josie Weymouth from the House of Praise Family Church in the city of Carson, okay? The name of my program today is called Josie's Corner. It's a devotional for women, okay? So today, what we're going to be talking about is we're going to be talking about the Word of God. And my message, the title to my message today is Let's Be Anchored to the Word of God. In other words, let's fasten ourselves firmly to the Word of God. Let's, let's secure ourselves to the Word of God. We can stand on the Word of God because, because God is loyal. God is faithful. He's a trustworthy God. You know, you can't always count on, on man. You know that you know, you've known people that said that they were going to do something for you and they didn't follow through. But God always follows through. Remember in the Word of God in Numbers, it says that He's not a man that He should lie, nor a man that He shall repent. Has He not said it and will He not do it? We can count on the Lord. We can count on His Word. You know, in the Word of God, my old pastor, my old pastor Gary Greger, he's gone on to be with the Lord, but he would always say there's over 7,000 promises in the Word of God. And there's about 4,600 promises, personal promises, that belong to us if we're God's children, okay? So, uh, you know, we can, as the Bible is also referred to as the promise book, okay? Knowing the promises of God can help us in our daily lives. When we know that God, what God has promised us, we can confidently claim those promises. In other words, whatever you're going through in your life, find the promise that pertains to that situation and claim it, stand on it, secure yourself, anchor yourself to the Word of God till you get your answer. You know, the Lord wants us to remind Him of His Word. In Isaiah, and we'll see it later on in Scripture, and Isaiah says, the Lord said, put me in remembrance. He wants to hear His Word. He doesn't want to hear whining or complaining, murmuring. He wants to hear His Word. The angels are waiting to hear His Word. They will not move on murmuring, complaining. They move on the Word of God. Okay? So that's what we're going to be talking about today. Remember I was telling you, let's stay anchored to the Word of God. Let's fasten ourselves securely to the Word of God. And I have an illustration for you. I have, I'm an illustrationist. I like to use stories. I like to use illustrations that go with my message. Well, um, this illustration happened in 1932. A flying warship was flying into San Diego. It was, it was called the Queen of the Skies. It was a, like a blimp, okay? As it was landing, there was about four sold, uh, sailors down there ready to hold down, you know, the ropes to tie, to secure the blimp, to secure it. So what happened is all of a sudden there was a gust of wind that pulled it up. Well, guess what? With it came the sailors. They're hanging on to the ropes as this, this blimp is going up into the air. One of them dropped right away. He let the rope go. He fell, and I think he broke his arm or something. But the other three kept holding on. You know, this this uh, this uh, blimp went up into the sky. And you're talking about, uh, it went up really high, and then two of the men couldn't hold on anymore. They let go of the ropes, and they were killed. But there was one that was holding on. And as a matter of fact, you know, he went over the ocean. This blimp went over the ocean. And this man did not get rescued. I think it took two hours. Finally, they rescued the man. And they asked him, wait a minute, what happened? These other ones could not hold on. Why were you still hanging on? He says, what I did was right away, I put the rope around me and secured it around me. And that's what saved his life. So see, that's what we're supposed to do is we're to anchor ourselves to the Word of God firmly firmly to the Word of God. Just hold on to it. Hold on to the Word of God. 
Okay, so let's keep going, okay? You know, in Isaiah 48, it says, The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of God stands forever. If God said it in, in his word, you can take it to the bank. Because he's not a man that he shall lie. Okay, so let's go. Let's keep going. You know, a promise is only as good as the one making it. It's a part of his care of God's character. He's faithful. He's never he doesn't change. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. God's promises are reliable. Like I said, men make promises with no intention to keep them, but that's not God. If he says something, he does it. And that's the way he wants us to be. As children of God, as his daughters, he wants us to be that way. The Bible says that we're to imitate him. We're to imitate him. We're to be like him. He's a God of his word. He wants us to be daughters that also stand on our word. If we say that we're going to do something, they will follow through. Okay, so let's keep going. So remember that scripture interprets scripture. What is the, the painting that God is painting for us here today as we go through this message? You know, my messages aren't long, but I believe we're going to get what God was trying to bring to his daughters. Okay? You know, we're to stand on God's word, not your feelings, not your emotions. Because like I said, your emotions will go up one minute and down the other. We're to stand securely on the word of God. Okay? So my uh, my next scripture, I, I have two different translations for you. Because if I can uh, get a translation that really explains it, I like to use it. Isaiah 55, 11, it says... So shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish that, accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing where I sent it. Okay, so now I went and looked up the same scripture in the message, and this is what it says. So shall my words, so will my words that come out of my mouth not come back empty handed. They will do the work that I sent them to do. They will complete the assignment that I gave them. You see? Do you notice how much it, it, it brings it down? It breaks it down where it's easier for us to understand. In other words, when God speaks, it happens. He, he has never changed. He's a never changing God. He, what he says goes. What he says goes. Remember, I was telling you that in Numbers 23, 19, it says, God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he shall repent. Has he not said it? And, 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 and shall he not make it good? You know, he's a, he's a God of his word. Okay? And I, I found this one. It, it goes right along with this one. This one's in Malachi 3, 6. For I am the Lord, and I change not. Remember that he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Okay? And you can find that in Hebrews 13, 8. My next scripture is in Matthew 24, 35. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. In other words, the word of God is his bond. It means that he keeps his promises. He fulfills every promise. He may not do it when you think he should do it. Because he does it at his time. At his time. And I'll give you an example. In the Old Testament. In, in Genesis 15, 3 and 4. This is talking about uh, Abraham and Sarah. Abraham, Abraham says, Behold to me, thou hast given no seed. Lo, no one, it says, Lo, one born in my house, it says, let me read that again. Abram said, Behold to me, thou hast given no seed. And lo, one born uh, in my house is an heir. And behold, the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, This shall not be your heir. He shall come forth out of your own bowels. He shall be your heir. 
And then it says, Abraham waited patiently. He endured and then he received the promise. In other words, all promises will come in due season. It's when it's God's timing, that's when they come to pass. Okay? When God promised Abraham an heir, it took a long time. It took 25 years for that promise to come to pass. Before the promise was fulfilled, it was fulfilled, it says here, before the promise was fulfilled, but it was fulfilled even when it seemed humanly impossible. I mean, this was a miracle. Abraham was a hundred years old. Sarah was 90 when Isaac was born. They themselves, they themselves had zero ability to bear children. It was God's miracle. My next scripture goes right along with this, talking about Sarah. This is in uh, Hebrews 11, 11. By faith, Sarah herself also received strength to conceive seed. She bore a child when she was past age because she judged him faithful who had promised. You see that all through the word of God, from the Old Testament all the way to the New Testament, you, you'll see that God was faithful to his promises. Okay, my next one is 1 Thessalonians 5.24, and I have two different translations. Uh, the first one is in the Old King James. It says, Faithful is he that called you, who will also do it. Okay? So I looked it up in the message, and this is what it says. The one who called you is completely dependable. If he said it, he will do it. Okay? Let me say that again. This is in the message. The one who called you is completely dependable. If he said it, he will do it. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your word. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. What does it say in Hebrews 10, 23? Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering. For he who promised is faithful. Uh, faithful means he's loyal. He's loyal to his word. Okay? Remember how I was telling you that scripture interprets scripture. Okay? In Deuteronomy 32, 4, it says, He is the rock. His deeds are perfect. Everything that He does is just and fair. He is a faithful God who does no wrong. How just and upright is He? Remember that the Lord is referred to as a rock. The essence of stability. Reliability. In other words, immovable. And I, ha I have a story, I have an illustration for you that goes right along with that, okay? So let me go, let me go over there. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Okay. This take, this take, this takes place at night. In other words, it's a story about a battleship. It's in the, it's at night. The captain's on the battleship. And right in front of him, he can see some lights far away. He can see the lights. The captain looked into the deep, uh, the dark night and saw faint lights. He sent a message to the light. You change your course 10 degrees south. But there was a return message coming from the light. And he said, no, you change your course 10 degrees north the captain the captain got angry because he was ignored he sent another message you change your course 10 degrees south on the captain a message from the light came back to him he said no you change your course 10 degrees north the captain sent another message you change your course 10 degrees south on a battleship Another message came to him. He said, no, you change your course 10 degrees north on the lighthouse. That's a picture of stability. That's a, pi a picture of reliability and immovable. That's the word of God. He won't move. That's God. He will not move. He said it. That's it. It settles it. That settles it because 
the Lord is referred to as the rock, the essence of stability, reliability, and immovable. You can count on him. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You know, when God says something, he does it because he's a covenant-keeping God. The Lord reminded me of this scripture. He's a covenant-keeping God. In Deuteronomy 7, 9, <clears throat> excuse me. In Deuteronomy 7, 9, it says, Know therefore that God, your God, He is God. He's a faithful God, keeping His covenant of love to a thousand generations, to those who have loved Him and keep His commandments. In other words, what is a covenant? A covenant is a binding promise, an agreement, a contract. Okay? He's faithful to His promises. Another one right here is in the Old Testament. This is Joshua 23, 14, and 15. This is Joshua's farewell to the children of Israel. He was addressing them. He said, Soon I will die, going away of everything on the earth. Deep in your hearts you know that every promise of the Lord has come true. Not a single one has failed. Uh, failed, but surely as the Lord your God has given you good things he promised, he will also bring disaster on you if you disobey him. In other words, we have to rest in the confidence that God will never fail to fulfill his promise to us when our ways please him. Okay? Thank you, Lord. Our next scripture is in 2 Timothy 2.13. If we are faithless, he remains true, faithful to his word and his righteous character. He cannot deny himself. His word is his bond. His word is his bond. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you for your word. Remember that in Hebrews 13, 8, it says, Jesus is the same yesterday today and forever he doesn't change you can count on him stand on his promises there's so many promises in the word of god and i'll i'll read some to you i'll read some to you a man named a w pink once said he never forgets he never fails he never falters never forfeits his word god is perfect he never changes okay Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And I have some examples for you from, from the Word of God that we can stand on. And I remind him of his Word, okay? Isaiah 43, 2 says, When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. Through the rivers, they will not overflow you. When you walk through fire, you will not be burned, nor shall the flame scorch you. In other words, I have God's promise that the waters won't drown me. I have his promise that the fires won't consume me. I have the pro his promise that my trials, and, and not only that, my, my trials come to make me strong. I'm to anchor myself to the word of God. Okay, here's another, here's another uh, example of some promises, okay, that I use. Isaiah 26, 3 says that he will keep you in perfect peace whose mind has stayed on him because we trust him. You, you see what I'm saying? No matter what you're going through, no matter what's going on around you, we have to stay focused on him and he's going to give us that peace that we need. You know, I mean, this message is speaking to me because sometimes you get so involved in the things that are going on around you that we get our eyes off the Lord. The Lord one time uh, gave me this illustration. If you remember... When Peter was walking on the water, he had his eyes on the Lord. But as soon as he took his eyes off the Lord and turned and saw the water, felt the wind, he started to sink. But as soon as he got his eyes back on the Lord and said, Lord, save me, the Lord lifted him up. Lifted him up. We have to stay focused on the Lord. But do you hear what it says? If you keep your mind on him, he will give you perfect peace. Okay, another one. 
you know uh, there was one there was a while back some years back that I was having demonic nightmares and I talked to my pastor and I said pastor I've been having demonic nightmares and all he said was Proverbs 3 24 and 25 so I went and looked it up and it says when I lie down I will not be afraid when I lie down my sleep shall be sweet I will not be afraid of sudden fear neither the desolation of the wicked when it comes you, you know, those those demonic, demonic dreams stopped because there's power in the word. Remember, what did Jesus use against Satan? Him being the son of God, God himself, used the word of get against Satan because the word of God is a two-edged sword against the enemy. Jesus gave it to Jesus, said, it is written, it is written, it is written. And if he said it, how much more are we supposed to do it? Okay? Thank you, Lord. You know, I, this is uh, in Isaiah 43, 26. The Lord says, put me in remembrance. State your case that you may be acquitted. He wants to hear his word. He, he wants you to remind him of his word. Whatever you're going through. If it's finances, if it's problems in the family, problems in the marriage, if it's sickness, find the promise that belongs to that situ that goes to that situation. Anchor yourself to that word of God and stand until God brings you the answer. Okay, he said, put me in remembrance. He wants to hear his word. He doesn't want to hear murmuring and complaining. He wants us to remind him of what the word of God says. You know, sometimes when I'm going through things and I just don't know what to do, I said, Lord, I lift up my hands. Lord, I surrender. But I, rem I, rem I remind him of what he says in Romans 8, 28. He said, Lord, I tell him, Lord, you said you would work everything up for my good. I don't know how you're going to do it. That's your business. But I know I stand on your promise that you're going to work it out for my good. And this is in Romans 8, 28. It says, we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, those who are called according to his plan. Do you see what I'm saying? We have to remind him of his word. You know, there are many things in, in life that we are not sure about. We live in a world of uncertainty. But thank God that we have God's promises. Another one, another promise that says, if I, be, if, if I believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, no, if I believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, me and my household shall be saved. That's another promise. If you have unsaved loved ones, you know, those that are away from God, that's what he says. He says, you know, that if you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, you and your household shall be saved that's a promise that's a promise from God another one that I remember you know it, it says train up a child in the way that they shall grow and when they get old they'll not depart from it see that's another promise that you can stand on for your children for your family okay In 2 Corinthians 1.20, it says, For all the promises of God are in him, yea, and in him, amen, unto the glory of God by us. Thank you, Lord, thank you. In other words, when life gets confusing and hard to understand, we need to focus steadfastly on God and his promises. In other words, stay on the promise of God until you get the answer stay there fasten yourself anchor yourself to that word until you get the answer okay so my summary like I was telling you my messages aren't long but I believe that we got the message that God was bringing across to his daughters this evening okay my first one is remember that there's about 4,600 personal promise that belong to us find the promise of whatever you're going through, find that promise and stand on it. There's a promise for whatever we're going through. There's a promise for it in the word of God. Okay. 
God's promises are reliable. Remember that God's word is his bond. God is faithful. He's trustworthy. He's loyal. Okay? And remember that in Numbers it says, remember that God is not a man that he should lie, nor a man that he shall repent. Has he not said it, and will he not do it? Okay? In other words, remember to stay at the promise of God till he answers it. Okay? Remember, let's stay anchored to the word of God, fastened to the word of God. Remember, Jesus is the word. Let's be anchored to Jesus. Okay? So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to say a prayer over the message. And then I'm going to pray a salvation prayer. Okay? So let's pray for the message right now. Lord, we are just so grateful for your word, Lord. Seal it in our hearts that we will be doers of the word, not just hearers only, Lord. Thank you for reminding your daughters, Lord, that there's thousands of promises in the word of God that we can claim for whatever we're going through, Lord. And Lord, you're faithful to your word, Lord. You're not, you, you know, you're not a man that you should lie. You're faithful. You're trustworthy, Lord. You're reliable. Lord, you, you don't change. You're the same yesterday, today, and forever. And we can count on your word, Lord. And we just thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, if you've been listening to my message and it's touched your heart and you've never accepted Jesus in your heart before, or maybe you're away from God and you want to rededicate your life to the Lord, okay? All you have to do is just pray a simple prayer with me. Just say, Father, forgive me of all of my sins. Jesus, come into my heart and be my Lord and Savior. Help me to live for you. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So that's my message for today, daughters of God. You just remember that you are very valuable to the Lord. You are very, very valuable to God. You're a diamond. You're a diamond to God. You're his jewel. We're his jewels. And he just wants you to know that you are so valuable. The enemy will sometimes use people to come against you, to put you down. Or he will work overtime in your mind to make you think that you're not worthy, that you're no good. You're never going to amount to anything. But those are lies from the pit of hell. Don't you really, don't you believe that? You just remember you value yourselves by what the word of God says. The word of God says that you're a mighty woman of God. You're a mighty woman of valor. You're a woman after God's own heart. And you're created in his image. You bear the stamp of the creator. And you're so valuable that Jesus was willing to die for you. He died for all humanity. But if you would have been the only one here, he would have died just for you. That's how valuable that you are. Remember, he would leave the 99 to go look for that one. So I just want you to be encouraged that, you know, you're very valuable to God. You're beautiful. You're God's masterpiece. You're God's masterpiece, okay? And until next time, may God richly bless you.